seen him yet. He was one of the major drivers of the whole show. Hello, sailor. Friendship down the tubes. You see me ready to step in. Uh, uh, let me immediately better, toast you. I better. Have, right? Okay, we yeah. need to. <laughs>
on a fateful, uh, fateful event, uh, Janet apparently needed a date. Was desperate, had nobody else around, I don't know, scraping the bottom of the barrel. And oh, her old buddy, Mary McCall, apparently, uh, said, I know a guy, I don't know. Well, you know, we'll try. What the heck? It's better than going alone. And he's got a tuxedo. He's got a tuxedo, a critical criteria for anybody. And I guess uh, the story, as I heard it, was that John came to the door, opened the door, and upon seeing the fabulous Janet True have said, you're beautiful. The boy got taste, you gotta admit, you know? And as I, and as I, as everyone who knows this man observed over the, la the next few months, Janet True have rocked his world. <laughs> she rocked his world. I mean, I have never seen any two people, well, particularly this guy I've known for years, I've never seen any two people so fabulously in love, so wonderfully exemplary of everything that we all believe in and want to believe in and sometimes are afraid of believing in about love and romance. There they are. And we get to be here to watch it all. We all want, I think, when we meet and fall in love, we all want our friends to say of us that we were the best thing that ever happened to her, the best thing that ever happened to him. And we're looking at two people for whom we can all say it. All the people, all the people of, of the friends of Janet who I've known, uh, who I've met so far, that I met last night, all say this absolutely the best gets to be John Conlon. And there's no question that she's the best thing that ever happened to him. And it goes, I guess it just goes to show you that dreams can come true and miracles can happen. And we're glad for that. <laughs> Of course, there are those who say that when a woman falls in love with a man, it's always because she has a better opinion of him than he deserves. But in this case, uh, <laughs> in this case, it's not really true. Because it's real life, true love. And it really is, you know? And so one of the best images, I guess, is they say that love is like an hourglass with a heart filling up with the brain empty. Uh, and I, and you see two people who are just full of it. So much so they, that they radiate it. And I guess for all of us, uh, those of us who know him, and even for the guy in the helicopter, the real, the real amazing thing about it is the real, the real symbol, the real sign, the real piece of uh, performance art that we all get to watch to symbolize that fabulous love that we hereby celebrate is the kiss. If there are ever two more two people in the world who kiss more, I don't know where they're at. And clearly their lips are raw by now because these are the people who do it. Now, there's, uh, there, are, there are those who also say that kissing is a way of getting two people so close together they can't see what's wrong with each other. But, <laughs> and if that works, that works fine. That works fine. But, you know, I, I, I personally, I tend to uh, subscribe myself to the kiss wave theory. I think that when, specifically, when John and Janet kiss, sparks occur. And they radiate out to all of us. And there's sparks of energy and playfulness and joy. And everybody is affected. Some of us are emboldened by the kisses of Janet and John. Some of us feel, well, they can kiss them, I'm going to start me kissing the one I love. Some of us are kind of frightened and we're like, oh, geez, I can't handle this. But that's only because we're just scared to believe it's true. You're scared to believe that two people, after even some period of time, can still be so enraptured of each other, can still be so caught up in this fabulous bond and wind of a rope of love that they just can't keep apart, but it's true. It really is, and, and so the kiss waves that generated by these two are a blessing to all of us as we are here to bless and celebrate their love. Uh, so the gift uh, of our presence is given back to us a million times by this great blessing of their love and that we are fortunate to be able to celebrate it together. Shakespeare said, Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss, for the lips do bring forth the soul, see where it flies. <laughs> so the point to all of this is the marriage. Um, Rilke said, that the best marriages are those in which each appoints the other guardian of their solitude. That your mate, the one you marry, is a constant reminder that you're all right, that you're okay. For all of the weirdnesses and all, and Lord knows John is gonna throw, no, <laughs> for all of them, for all of them that you're okay, you know? And no matter what any of the rest of them say, what you feel about you is right. The love you have for you is right. And it's again a the cause. Uh, and now, of course, I am, uh, I'm, uh, I carry my Bible. This is my, my one favorite thing, uh, which is uh, from uh, 
Song of Solomon. Uh, Solomon, of course, uh, a great believer in marriage, having done it 700 times. Uh, kind of a biblical Will Chamberlain. Uh, <laughs> good old Magic Solomon. But uh, the Song of Solomon says, Place me like a seal upon thine heart, like a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, and jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot wash it away. There's an old uh, Jewish legend that says that each soul is required to stand before God at the time of creation, each soul being both male and female. The souls are then given over to the entity called night, who is in charge of conception. There they are united by God to one. Then the soul descends slowly to earth, separating as it does into male and female, which is the way of this world. Arriving on earth not always in the same place or at the same time, but arriving. And it, it is said that the souls spend the whole of their time on earth searching for each other. And sometimes they make mistakes. They think they found the right one, but they haven't. But when the right match is made, then God, who knows all souls, unites them again as they were in the beginning. Such people are called whole. Such marriages are called blessed. Uh, now, the, the, the wedding ceremony, as we all know, uh, essentially comes to us uh, from, the, from the, old, uh, the old Jews. Uh, there were three uh, ways in which a um, wedding was considered to be legitimate in the eyes of the community. Uh, one, the first was called kisef, which literally means silver, uh, which harkens back to the time when the families used to get together completely independent of the bride and groom. And they would get together and they would decide, agree on a bride price, and they would be, it would be paid in silver, and the families would go back and tell the bride and groom whom they were to marry. And it was all very pleasant. Uh, then times changed and the coins changed and they, they changed the silver and it went to gold. And then it got to be less of an actual kind of buying a bride, but more of a kind of an agreement. And it was less of a bride price and a symbolic coin was exchanged. And but the some cultures, the coins were too big, and so they kind of hollowed out the coin and made it into a ring. And the ring uh, that now uh, John gives uh, to, to Janet is to symbolize uh, the part of that continu continuity with that tradition, but further to, to symbolize that those things of the earth, of uh, these precious metals, are meaningless. The things for which, uh, in, in the face of this love, the things for which people struggle and toil their lifetimes are laid at the feet of his love as a trinket. And so now, John will place the, the ring as a token of his love in the finger of his bride. Uh, the second way in which uh, the marriage was considered legitimate uh, was called star, which literally means contract. Uh, the tradition, just briefly, was that if the family didn't have enough money to put up the, the kithaf, you know, you would just write it down and we'd all say it would all get done later on. Uh, but the idea is that the promise is what, uh, see, the promise made before the community is what sealed the deal. And so now we ask Janet and John, do you promise to love, honor, cherish and kiss each other <laughs> in sickness and in health for richer or for poorer better or worse for ever and ever till the end of time the other wonderful thing about this ceremony for all of us even for all those of us who are not getting married is that because of our attendance here we are, by definition, co-conspirators in John and Janet's love. It becomes our responsibility as their friends and as the community that love them to cherish and nurture their time together, when they're, to, 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 to remind them of this wonderful event, to remind them of what they have taught us about love, and to embody that love, the love that they have given us, to embody that in our lives. Uh, to that end, uh, you, I think you all have uh, copies uh, on some fabulous uh, handmade paper by uh, Joyce Owen. Uh, of uh, what we call the Apache Wedding Blessing. And uh, what we were, this is our, uh, this is where it was considered by the Apaches that you weren't actually married until everybody says you're married. And so now we will all, do we all have that? I think we all have that. Everybody has their copies of the Apache Wedding Blessing, if you can bring those out right now. Thank you very much. I see Matt's got his back there. We all ready? 
So we will uh, together uh, give the blessing to the bride and groom. Now you will feel no rain, for each of you will be sheltered to the other. Now you will feel no cold, for each of you will be warm to the other. Now there is no loneliness for you. Now there are two peace persons, but there is one life before you. Go now to your dwelling place to enter into the days of your togetherness. May your days be good and long upon the earth. And now, by the uh, pretentious powers of the state of Illinois, <laughs> I pronounce you husband and wife. May you live happily ever after.
actor. I have an ego. I have to. Oh, this is our favorite thing is we do. <laughs>